everyone or afternoon if you're East Coast. Uh, today's Makers Monday is all about imposter syndrome and what it is, how to say goodbye, and how to fake it till you make it. So um, yeah, welcome. I am excited to see you here. Oh my gosh, so many fun people here. Um, welcome. And yeah, so imposter syndrome. We, this, I feel like this is one of those buzzwords we hear a lot. What is it? So basically, if you don't know, it's something that you feel like you are imposter or you're a kind of fake, like you're, you're, you don't belong. You're not, you're everybody around you is, um, no, they know what they're doing and you're just there somehow by mistake. So um, if you have felt this, you are not alone. This is something that's very common. Um, yeah, and I I know I've definitely felt it and I didn't really realize it had a name. So if that's what you're feeling, sometimes it helps when you have a name to say, to call somebody, to call something. Anyway, ah! <laughs> I need more coffee this morning. Um, but yeah, so I feel like in in my journey of like imposter syndrome and stuff like that, I feel as though when I was teaching and things like that, there were definitely times that I didn't know what I was doing, but I never really felt the imposter syndrome as much as I did um, when I became an artist and started calling myself an artist. Like I felt like I had the formal teaching. I went to, you know, good teaching school. I had done my homework. I did all, I had done all the things, but then when I moved into the art world, I had, never I mean I you know I took like art class in middle school or um but I wasn't like I like to draw and color and stuff for fun but I had never done it professionally I'd never had aspirations to do it professionally like I was like oh my god what am I doing like who am I to call myself an artist I even remember I had just finalized my business license and we were going around a circle this was like right before COVID hit and um we were going around a circle and talk, telling people like what we did. I was a part of a, I was leading a parents group and um, they said, oh, you know, everybody's saying their job. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm a stay at home mom and I am doing this volunteer thing. And it's like, no, like, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but like, I, that, that wasn't what I was doing. I had just started a business. So it was, it just felt really weird I feel like I'm only now becoming comfortable calling myself an artist. So um, imposter syndrome, it's a thing. Um, and today we are going to kind of talk about some ways that we can work around it because we won't let it stand in our way. So um, yeah, when you get started with something, everything is new and uncomfortable, right? Like there is never gonna be something that you start and you're like, you know what, I'm actually amazing at this. Like. Everything is going to have its growing pains, its uncomfortable feelings whenever you start a new job. I know um, a bunch of my friends have started new jobs amidst COVID and they're going into work now and they're like, you know, they're going to have to go into the office. So even that, like, I don't even know where to put my coat or whatever. Those are all really uncomfortable feelings. So um, something that helps me a lot when dealing with this is... Um, that I I try to acknowledge that it's like part of the learning process. Like this is a normal feeling. And if you can just like say, okay, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I don't know what's going on. You can just kind of say, okay, I see that. I hear you. But I trust in myself to know that I am good at learning how to figure things out. Think of all the things that felt really weird and uncomfortable in the beginning and now you're like, oh yeah, that old thing. So I, I don't know if you guys wanna share in the comments too, like times when you felt imposter syndrome or what you've done to help get through it. I would love to like share that with the group too. So this is not just me talking on my soapbox. Um, but yeah, so just acknowledging that it's part of the learning process is like, really good step. Like this is normal. Um, another thing you can do is try to look at the positive, right? Like every situation you can find something like you can find some spin on it. You can be a spin doctor and figure out a way that it sounds advantageous. So maybe, um, 
I had a friend in high, a friend from high school and, um, she didn't like, uh, she was just kind of trying to find herself and figure things out. And she didn't like really, I don't know if you looked at like what she was doing on a resume, you'd be like, what the heck are you doing? But the way that she would explain it to people when we would like meet people going out for drinks or whatever, it was like, girl, you've got it going on. And so it was all about how she made it sound to other people. And, um, I've definitely done this a lot. Like I, I know in my last post, I talked a lot about body image and when sometimes you just got to keep telling yourself that narrative until you believe it. Like maybe you are, um, you know, maybe you got, um, laid off or something with COVID like, right. That it's hard and it sucks, but it has given you the opportunity to start and venture forward on your creative business. And so looking at it as an opportunity, even if it doesn't feel like that and calling it an opportunity and kind of structuring your narrative in that way can maybe help you believe it as you continue to go through um, and, and get better and better until you're like, yeah, you know what? I had that opportunity. Um, like I had a terrible ankle break accident and I was like, this is the best thing that happened to me. I had to move out of New York. I had to quit my job. I had to do all this like really crummy stuff, but it ended up being an opportunity because I could go back to Ohio, kind of settle myself. I met my husband. Like it just, I don't know. It became an opportunity because I gave it that permission. So I know easier said than done for sure. It doesn't always feel that way in the moment. So, um, Oh yeah, Jess says, mindset and perspective or reframing is so good. Yes, totally agree. Um, another thing, fake it till you make it. Um, so I <laughs> I used to do, I mean, I know this is a common phrase. I used to do like tap dancing classes and stuff because I thought I was going to be on Broadway. Turns out I am a terrible dancer. Um, but my dad, who did opera singing and performed a lot in his youth, um, he was always like, just fake it till you make it. As long as you got your jazz hands and a smile, nobody's going to be looking at your feet. So you can bet I hammed it up. Um, so, you know, that same kind of idea, just until you feel like you're there, as as long as you are just, you know, have, have the right energy, sometimes it can distract people from the part, the, the part that you're still learning. Also, we don't need to necessarily distract people from the fact that we're still learning, right? I think we're so expected to be perfect. We're so expected to know everything. Um, a big part of why I want to share these Makers Mondays is because, like, I'm not perfect and I don't know everything. And I want to share these, like, struggles and journeys with you because it's not realistic to have everything be perfect all the time. It's just not life, right? So um, I think, you know, if you want to join me in that effort to make things be a little bit more transparent, I think that's a really valuable um, part of your journey and process. So, okay, let's see. What else do I have on my list? Okay, we faked it till we maked it. That is not grammatically correct. Um, if you're not always going, you're not always going to feel confident, right? You that's just the way of life. Some days, some days we wake up and we're like, damn, I look good, right? Sometimes we wake up and we're like, I look like a sack of potatoes. So um, sometimes when I'm feeling those good moments, I like to think of the things that I do do well. And if you want to write it down, you know, even better. Tack that little baby up on a post-it note and remind yourself how awesome you are. The good things. Like, I love my hair. I love the way that my office looks. I think I am really good at adding texture to watercolor detail, whatever. Whatever your things are. Um, I make a mean PB&J sandwich. Whatever your things are, whatever makes you feel good about yourself, just do it. Um, write it down so that when you're feeling crummy, you can look at that list and be like, that is true. Who's that gal doing all those good things? Oh, right, it's me. Um, and Annie um, from Sweet Annie's Baked Goods, who does a very cute uh, cookies. I struggle with this a lot because I haven't done cookies super long, but now that I'm not teaching, I find myself with this great opportunity, but I feel like I should have something as a backup. Yeah, so 
and, and I totally feel you on this one. Um, that feeling like you need to have something to be like, oh yeah, I'm trying this thing out, but like, don't worry, I've got it covered, right? Like if people ask, you're like, I'm not just throwing caution to the wind, right? Like, but maybe that's okay, right? I mean, your cookies are super adorable and and maybe, in, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends, but I feel like unless I'm putting my whole... I'm not very good. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Wait. Okay. Um, I'm not very good at like half-assing things. I got to put my, my whole ass on the line. And unless I'm like giving it my, you know, classic 150% attention, um, it's hard to like fully jump in and commit, right? So I, I totally feel you wanting that piece for um, saying, okay, I've got this in myself. Uh, I've, I'm going to do this. Um I've got faith in myself, but then also having that like safety backup thing. I'm sorry, I'm like blowing up over here with the texts. Um, and so I don't know, maybe think about um, something that um, I, I've worked with, uh, like she's a parenting coach, but I was kind of seeing her more like postpartum, like life, what am I doing? Um, and she talked about like, is that list um, for you? Is that backup option for you? so that you feel like you have a safety net. And I think that is like totally legit. But if it's for other people, like to make your mom feel better or your friends to not be like, what the heck is she doing? Like, I think that that is, you know, if that's very important to you, that's okay, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But I do think it's something to kind of do a little bit of a deep dive and say, is this really for me and for my family, you know? Um, so yeah, um, anyway, don't hesitate, girl, just jump in. Um, all right, so you're not always gonna feel confident. You can write a list of why you rock. You can look at that list when you're feeling down. Um, sometimes I just like to slap some lipstick on and play some Lizzo. So, you know, whatever works to get you feeling good. Hi, Cheryl. Um, yeah, and for me, something else that really helped was taking anxiety medication. Um, so, you know, like I, when I was starting this journey, I, I, I think I've shared with you guys pretty openly, I had postpartum depression and <laughs> realized that I'd probably been struggling with anxiety like my whole life. And I started getting on medication to like get through the postpartum stuff and it really helped. And it just like allowed me to cut the noise um, out and focus in on what was really important to me. So I know it's not for everybody. Um, but if that's something that you've been experiencing and you want to talk about it, like I'm, I'm definitely open. It's been a game changer for me. So, um, yeah, those are kind of my, my quick, my quick tips. Think of it as part of a, part of a learning process. Think about it like what are the opportunities instead of why all the reasons it's not going to work. Um, make a list of why you're awesome and look at it when you're feeling down. And Lipstick and Lizzo, the classic combination. Um, yeah, so those are kind of my big, like, let's kick it to the curb. So let's talk about also one of the big hurdles in imposter syndrome. Oh my gosh, do you guys hear all this beeping? Sorry. Um, I'm in the middle of finalizing wedding, a wedding suite. And it's just like, ding, 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 ding. And I don't know how to turn it off here. Hold on, let's see if I can. Whoop, okay, that'll at least be the computer will be off. Um, so let's talk about one of the big questions that people have is, okay, so I like doing art. I feel like pretty good at it or um, whatever. Like I'm ready to sell my art. And then you start to like think, okay, I'm gonna put it on Etsy or I'm gonna make my website or whatever. And you're like, what am I doing? I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. Like, no, you've got this. So when are you ready to sell your art? Um, I think, it can be whenever you darn well please. It might be something that you're doing it at various levels, right? You might be ready to sell it to friends and family or just people who are asking about it. Maybe like I kind of started like I had a friend, I did, I did Christmas presents. And so it was like, I guess I was buying my own art to give to, to friends, whatever. <laughs> so you got to start somewhere. Um, and it's okay if it's in your safe network. Uh, and then as you build that confidence, you know, you can open up to bigger markets. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Maybe people won't buy it. 
but there's always going to be a market for your art and you just have to find it. And it's not going to be like, hey, they're all knocking at your door ready to go when you start. Um, some ways to kind of find your people are to um, use like more specific hashtags. So instead of being like card shop that has a lot of hashtags, do punny card for dad or whatever, like something punny aquatic cards or whatever. Um, I think you can tell where my mind is in the card department right now. Um, anyway, so like you'll find you'll find your your people and it might not be right away and that's okay and it might not be any of the people around you, right? Like I think when I first started making stuff, I was thinking about all the people around me and honestly, my style and what my calling is isn't quite meeting what like my immediate network is, but I I'm finding a lot of uh, traction with my other things, just people who I don't like grab coffee with. I mean, who grabs coffee with anybody anymore anyway, but you get the idea. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's just when you're ready. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the answer. You know the answer for you. And if you feel like you're ready to put your toes in the water, go for it, right? Um, and I think that kind of is in conjunction with pricing. Like, First of all, I am like 100, I, I will definitely do one on pricing, but um, I kind of am waiting a little bit. So I feel like I have a little bit more under my belt um, in that department, but I'm always gonna advocate, advocate for you to bump up your pricing, like hike it up. Um, if you feel like people are really like, oh wow, what a great deal, like put it up, put it up. So, um, but if, you know, for your first couple ones, like just while you're getting your feet wet and figuring out what your routine is, like if you're starting custom work and you want to, you know, maybe your aunt Rhonda or whatever wants to commission something and as you're figuring out how you're gonna do your payment system, what supplies you're gonna use, how your shipping's gonna go, yeah, maybe charge her just a hundred bucks and then move up from there um, as you figure out how much time it's going to take you, how much um, your supplies cost, how much shipping costs. Like I do a bulk pricing for my commissions and I just know that shipping is going to cost an arm and a leg. So that's part of the price. So I don't have to be like, hey, and your shipping is blah, 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 even though you already paid me for the custom, which I'll get into at another point in time. But needless to say, like start somewhere and you might lose a little bit of money or it might be, you know, like, I don't know if this is right or whatever, but something that you're comfortable with until you get comfortable with your process. And then as soon as you feel that little moment of comfort, you just hike it up. If you are too comfortable with your pricing, I think you're not pricing enough. That's just my, um, my, uh, subtle, subtle plug to, um, shower yourself with gratitude for your worth. Um, Anyway, um, I think, I think that's all I have to say on this topic. Does anybody have any questions or comments while I kind of wrap up? You can go ahead and type them in. Um, I just want to hype my earrings. Just, this is not an ad or anything, but aren't these so cute? These are from Michaela Made on Etsy and I'll put a link in the, I'll put a link in my blog so you can see, but they're just so cute and I'm obsessed with them. Anyway, um, yeah, so Makers Mondays, they're every Monday, live at 10. They won't be live for like three months. I'll pre-record them um, So because we're having a baby. Um, but once we come back, it'll be live again. And anybody who is on my Biz Buds newsletter will get a chance to see the topics ahead of time of the ones that I'm pre-recording, and you can ask your questions there. So it's like you still get your input, you still get your questions answered, I'm ready for you. So I'll be sending that out in the next couple uh, weeks. If you're interested in that, DM me and I will add you to the list. Basically what it is, is every Monday you get a reminder of what the topic is. You get um, links to my blog. A lot of times I have awesome little freebies of like, you know, or li like little worksheets to help you through these topics or checklists to be like, oh, what, what do I need for my style? Shoot, blah, 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 blah. All kinds of good stuff and it all is free. It goes right to your email inbox and basically I'm doing it because we need a community. We need a community of fellow creators because this stuff is tough and you shouldn't feel like you're alone. So anyway, um, that's that. So thanks for 
hanging out and playing along and it's been great to see you all and thanks for tuning in. So I'll see you next week uh, where we talk about, oh, I can tell you, we're going to talk about time blocking. Woo! Um, it's not spooky. I just am a weird ghost, apparently. So <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about time blocking tomorrow. Bye!